Uh, this is the first in a series of uh, short videos where I'm going to focus on very specific aspects of the uh, endoscopic surgery uh, to uh, show you all the little tips and tricks and nuances that I've developed over the years to try to make the surgery go well um, and avoid uh, complications and troubles and also make the surgery more efficient. This first video will be focusing on how I utilize the intraoperative imaging and how I target uh, and get to the surgical target site, which is usually Camden's triangle. And you'll see how I utilize the uh, fluoro and intraoperative C-arm, the 18-gauge uh, uh, spinal needle, and the initial dilator, and how I plan out all my incisions, because sometimes uh, when you utilize all those complicated lines to get to where you want to get to, uh, it can be very confusing, and you'll see I use a very pragmatic strategy to get to where I need to get to. Before getting started, uh, it's imperative that uh, we have everything all teed up so that during the surgery we don't have a lot of uh, missing items or we're fumbling around through things. So I'm a big, big believer in checklists. And here's an example of the checklist that's utilized for this surgery. It includes all the things that we need during the surgery uh, and before the surgery, along with uh, nuances that take into account what room I'm in, what hospital I'm in, and uh, what side I'm utilizing and what equipment I'm utilizing. You can just see how many things there are. And I always say the smaller the incision, the longer the checklist that's necessary to make the surgery. All right, so the first order of business is when this patient's position, I bring the C-arm in upright in an AP position, you can tilt it, but I want the rainbow to be zero so that the image intensifying screen is parallel to the earth. That way when it comes to a lateral and it stops at 90 degrees, I know I can get a perfect lateral. Alrighty, so the first thing I do uh, is um, once I make the patient, once I know that the patient's perfectly flat relative to the earth on an AP view at the surgical target site, I draw the clinical midline that just gives me a frame of reference as to where I am. So just a very long line. And then on a lateral x-ray, I just use the pencil. So I don't draw all these complicated lines in the AP and lateral plane because I get confused. So I use a much more pragmatic strategy. I use the lateral x-ray, and I use the pencil roughly 15 centimeters from the midline. And I look over there, shot. And that looks like a really good trajectory. So if you look at that lateral x-ray, I've taken the pencil, and I can see from where I have it, that is a pretty good starting point. I want to be right at the base of the pedicle, so I'm kind of angling down into the pedicle. That allows me to get around the flare of the facet joint and get me, allows me to get much more flat and into the canal. Once I have that kind of initial starting point, I'll draw a very long line. And the position from medial to lateral is a combination of being no more than 15 centimeters. My finger from here to here is exactly 15 centimeters, by the way. And on a lateral x-ray, I want to be roughly at the top of the spinous process. I don't want to be so far over though that it's past 15 centimeters for two reasons. One, the cannulas will bottom out. And two, if I'm too flat, you're more at risk for getting into the retroperitoneal space. So I'm kind of splitting the difference, finding a reasonable spot using both lateral fluoro as well as just the clinical anatomic position. And I think this is going to be probably the best starting point. All right, so the first thing I do is I put a very gentle bend on the needle so I can direct the needle a little bit better without going in and out of the stabbing. And the other thing that I do is, I used to use the needle to get to the surgical target site, and oftentimes I'd have like multiple poke holes because the starting point wouldn't be perfect. So instead, what I do now is I use the needle just to numb up the track roughly in the area that I want to be in. And once the needle's down, I will know if the starting point's good. And if it's slightly off, I'll make some adjustments, and I'll make the incision, and I'll use the thin initial dilator to get down to where I, am, where I need to go. So I'll show you how I do that. So, I've estimated that this is probably the best starting point. I'll just simply put the needle in there as they start and take a shot. Can you raise the C on just a hair? Shot. So you can see that is about where I started. It's correct. Oftentimes it won't be. So I will just use this needle to inject. And I think I'll be able to make the incision right where I want it to. But until I get to where I need to get to, I won't know for sure if it's perfect. So I'm just numbing up the fascia, the muscle, the septicinous skin, 
and most importantly, the facet joint. Shot. And I can tell from that lateral C-arm image, I really like this starting point and trajectory. Instead of using that needle to try to get to Camden's triangle and trying to direct this flexible needle where I want to go, I'd rather I started using this uh, stiffer initial dilator. It's still relatively thin, but it's blunt. I'm not going to injure any nerves, and I can drive this a lot better. And I don't have to make the incision around the needle. So if I think that that starting point was the right starting point, I'm just going to take a, take a 10 blade and literally just make a stab incision right there. Maybe a millimeter and a half slightly bigger than that. If during the injection I thought I should be a little bit higher, I'll just nudge over a little bit and make the incision. So now I also have the perfect incision. And instead of using the needle, I'll use this after numbing up that whole track to drive it down to the surgical target site. Being real gentle, I have my hand on the patient's back so I don't plunge. And I'm gonna use lateral imaging to direct exactly where I wanna go. So if you look at that C-arm picture, you can see that I'm heading to where I want to get to. I'm going to touch the facet joint. Shot. And I can just slowly, I can feel it, I can just walk down, hugging the superior articular process, watching neural monitoring for free running and G activity and just very gently getting to Camden's triangle. So I'm just kind of gently winding my way down. I feel so much more comfortable with this than the needle shot. So it's a little low to do a disco grind shot. And it's so much easier to direct this than the needle. If I use the needle, I have to start all the way back and create a new track. This I can almost wand back and forth. And I can feel the disc there. And I'll even tap the dilator. Can you come over here, Tim? So once it's on Camden's triangle, I can kind of feel that it's on a disc. I will tap it like this to see if there's any jumping or any free run EMG activity. If the patient's awake, we can ask, does this shoot a pain down your leg? All right, so now I have this on Camden's triangle. I know I don't have a nerve in the way. I'll inject the disc by using this little opening, long 22 gauge needle. Same thing, taking my time, being gentle. I can feel something that feels like this, and I know that the patient's not jumping. And this is how I'll do the discogram. Rather than trying to drive this flexible needle to where I want to get to, and stabbing back and forth to try to get to where I want to get to. This is much easier, much faster. Shot. All right, so I have the needle in. It feels really good. If you look at the CRM image, I'll aspirate very slowly start taking some shots with the injecting shot, making sure I'm getting a good discogram, and looking for a leakage out the back to identify the anterior tear. And I already see it right there. There's a little shadow pressing shape you can see right there. That is basically how I target uh, and get everything where I need to get to um, expeditiously and with minimal risk to the nerve.